I'm Ian, and more importantly, this is a marking gauge. As you probably know, it's used to draw lines parallel to an edge, but if you haven't been shown how to use one, it can be a bit tricky to get the hang of. So in the next five minutes, I'm going to show you just that, how to use a marking gauge properly. It doesn't matter which pattern of marking gauge you have, it's going to have four main components, and those components are the thumb screw, which unlocks the fence, which is this part here, that in turn slides back and forth along this component, which is the stem. And through the stem, there's been driven a pin that projects about three millimeters. I know it looks as though that pin should stick out a little further, but three millimeters is about all you need. So if it's sticking out more than that, push it back a little bit. When you're holding this, it should be that the thumb screw is pointing directly away from you. You should have your finger on top, your thumb about here, and the pin should be pointing downwards. But if you're left-handed, what you need to do is to slide the fence off the stem, rotate it through 180 degrees, put it back on, and then you'll be able to hold it in your left hand in the same orientation. When you're doing that, be careful when you take that fence off that you don't lose a little disc that is a bearing surface between the thumb screw and the stem. Mine hasn't got one of those, but yours might, and it's important you keep that located against that thumb screw. When you're setting a marking gauge, what you need to try and do is to adjust this thumb screw so that the fence can slide along the stem with a little bit of friction so that it doesn't move by itself, but it doesn't take too much effort to slide it in the direction you want it to go. When you've achieved that, put your thumb so that your thumb is at an angle against the fence and then level that joint off so that you're using your thumb a bit like a cam. See what I mean? You're leveling off that thumb joint and you're rolling your thumb and at the same time you're moving the fence along the stem. Having achieved that, what you can do is to put your steel rule into the 90 degree angle between the fence and the stem. You can put the point of your scriber on your scale and use that thumb action to gradually bring that point to the correct position, in this case, 10 millimeters. Then you can tighten up your thumb screw and check it because it could be that when you tighten the thumb screw up that the fence has moved slightly, so you might have to reset it. If you want to do it super accurately, what you can do is to go through the same process, but this time you can actually pop the point of the pin into the engravings on your steel rule. So I can pop that into my 10 millimeter engraving, make sure it's settled in there, and then bring my fence up against my steel rule, tighten up my thumb screw, and now I can feel because the point is sitting in that engraving mark and it won't move that that's spot on 10 millimeters. So certainly for divisions of one millimeter, or if you've got the eyesight, half millimeter, you can use the engravings to get the exact setting that you need. If you're working to point one of a millimeter, you're just gonna to have to work within your millimeter marks to get it exactly where you want to be. And do take a bit of time to get it right because this is an accurate tool and you want to make sure if you're working to point one of a millimeter that you're using it to that degree of accuracy. Lastly, how to hold the tool. You need to control it. And in order to do that, you've got to hold it properly. And like most tools, the grip that you're going to use on it is three fingers, one finger thumb. So you've got three fingers around the stem, one finger on top of the fence, and your thumb should be placed so that it's pushing against the fence where the friction is being created by that pin digging into the wood. So about there, so finger on top, thumb about there, and three fingers around the stem to complete the grip. So then you can practice getting your fence so that it slides without movement along this edge of your work and that your stem is sitting on top of your work and there's no wobble in that direction. You don't want wobble in that direction. You don't want wobble in that direction. So you practice with the pin moving behind the tool but not touching the work. And just get the hang of that to make sure that you're controlling the tool and you're feeling comfortable with that action. When you've achieved that, you can just rotate that stem round so that the pin is dragging behind the tool, but touching the work, and then you can start to make your mark. And you don't need to make your mark too deep. 
just a scratch will do because what you do having made your mark is to run a pencil along there to get a little bit more visibility into what you've achieved. Well, you'll be sorry to hear that that is pretty much all you need to know about using a marking gauge, except for two things. Firstly, if you've sourced a second-hand marking gauge, and as you might know, I'm a firm advocate of buying second-hand tools over new, it might well be that you need to sharpen the pin. It should hurt when you tap it with your fingertip. And secondly, there is a modern product called a wheel marking gauge that looks like this and costs about six times the price of the Draper version of the tool I've just used. I'm sure there are plenty of woodworkers who would swear by it, but personally, if a tool like this was good enough for Thomas Chippendale, it's probably good enough for me and it might well be good enough for you. I hope you found the tutorial useful and if you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there and I'll leave a couple of links in the description below that you might find useful. See you again soon and happy woodworking.